In this video, I'm going to show how you can make use of the Zoe desktop. I'll be covering the basics from a user perspective, including things like managing jobs, datasets, and Unix files, and also launching terminals. Right now, I'm at the Zoe desktop logging page. I'll enter my TSO credentials, and I should be taken to the desktop. Along the bottom here, we've got our application menu, some application shortcuts, and then our notifications, personalization hub, and the ability to log out. From the personalization hub, I can actually change my password, change the language, or just change the look and feel of Zoe. I'll make things a little bit bigger for the purpose of this demo. I'm going to launch the Jez Explorer by clicking on the application shortcut just here. The Jez Explorer gives me an interface into all of the jobs currently running on this system. On the left here, you'll see a tree of all of the jobs currently owned by myself with the user ID Jordan. I can change the job filters here, so I'll specify all jobs, and then I'll specify a prefix filter of the ZWE asterisk. This will get back all of the jobs on the system that match that prefix. Now the ZWE1SV is the default name for Zoe Starter Task. Um, so here on the system, I've got a couple running. Let's take a look at one. So upon clicking on it, it then expands to show me the spool files for that job instance. I can look at these spool files. I can then do things like downloading the spool files to my local system. We can open a spool file in a full screen view. Um, and you'll notice here at the top, we've got some URL parameters. But this means this URL can be passed around. Perhaps you can Slack it to a friend or um, send it in an email. We can also do things like purging the job, or we can get the, job, the JCL that was used to submit the job. We could then modify this JCL in some way and resubmit it. Next, let's take a look at the MVS Explorer, which will let me view all of the datasets that are on my system. You see as it loads, it'll pre-fill the qualifier search field with my username and then it's got back all of the datasets that are currently matching that filter. So I've got both partitioned and sequential datasets here. Here I've got jordan.copy, which has a few members. So I can take a look at the members here, I can see the contents. I can specify um, a syntax highlighting for this, which is just some JCL. It's some basic JCL, which just invokes this program, um, which takes an input dataset and copies its contents to an output. Um, so you'll see here we've got our input, um, which is hello from VS Code right now. Let's change that to hello from the desktop. And then we can save this. Oops, a little bit of a typo there. And then what we can do is actually submit this from the MVS Explorer. So I can right click on a dataset member and click to submit as job. And now we should get a notification that that job was submitted. And we did. And we also get back the job ID in case we need it. So now I can jump over to the Jazz Explorer again. I can reset the filter parameters and apply so I get back my jobs and we should see a new job now. And we do, copy. So we'll just have a look and make sure that's the right job. Um, let's get the JCL. Yep, and we see that's the JCL we saw just a second ago. Um, and we can see that that job executed successfully. So now let's have a look at the output data set that we've added content to. And there we go, hello from the desktop. We can also do things like creating new data set members or new data sets. We provide some handy presets here for the different data set parameters. We can delete and rename data sets. We've also got the option of opening a data set in a full screen window. So we can do that here and again we've got a URL parameter here that specifies the data set that we're opening. So again, you could Slack this to people or include it in an email or such. Now we'll have a look at the editor app. You'll see it pre-filled the search field with my username, uh, prepended with slash u. So that's taking me to my home directory. So here I can navigate the Unix file system. Here I've got a few Zoe installs. I'll have a look at one. Uh, we can drill down and we can have a look at the files here. So here we've just got a shell script. 
um, if I had more interesting languages, I could specify um, the language syntax highlighting I'd like to see. Um, so let's just use PowerShell here. You'll see that that works. Um, we can do things like look at the properties of the file. Um, we can delete files, of course, and modify them and then save them. And we can also create new files or new directories even. We've also got the option to connect to a language server. So if you've got a language server providing enhanced language support for something such as COBOL, um, you can specify those parameters here. Finally, let's take a look at the terminal emulators that Zoe provides. First of all, we've got the TN3270 application, which is a 3270 emulator. You'll see here, as it loads, it'll connect to my system. So I can log in here using my TSO credentials again, and then I'll get access to my system and I'll launch straight into ISPF where I can navigate to things like 3.4 and look at my data sets in the old school way. I can also launch the VT Terminal app, which is a SSH terminal. So you'll see once this loads, I'll be prompted for my login credentials. So I'll enter my username and my password once again. Then I'll be taken to a Unix command prompt. So I can do things like ls um, or any other Unix command that I'd like to run. So now I've seen all of the basic interfaces that Zoe Desktop provides that give you access to your jobs, datasets, and Unix files on the system. There's a few extra applications that come by default with Zoe. Um, those being the API catalog, which lets you view the different API services you have registered with your API gateway. There's some sample applications that demonstrate how you can embed existing or create new applications within the Zoe desktop. So there's existing applications that would use the iframe, and then you could create new native desktop applications using these sample, Angular, and React apps as examples. There's a user tests and workflows for managing ZOSMF workflows if you make use of those. And of course, you can hopefully see how this platform is extensible. You can have your own apps that exist within this menu. Um, these could be applications that you've built yourself, or they could be provided by independent software vendors or other third parties. Um, so you could imagine there being perhaps a Kix Explorer or a, a DB2 interface or an IMS interface within the Zoe desktop.